G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, today we're going to have a look at some inserts, and these inserts are different to your normal general purpose inserts. These are made to machine aluminium, so they vary a bit from your regular GP inserts that you would use for pretty much everything. So, anyway, first I'll put up some screen grabs on what we're dealing with, and then we'll move on. Okay, so here they are with the, the little sliding lid off and you get 10 of them, they're nice and shiny. They look nicely made from first observations. So we'll take one out and we'll compare it to a general purpose one and the tooling I'm going to use to mount them which is uh, CCGT, uh, we'll use 8mm tooling. 8mm is quite good because you can use it from anything from a shear line right up to 10 inch swing lathe and as you only machining aluminium, provided you don't go real heavy, uh, it'll do the job quite nicely. Okay, here they are out of their containers, the aluminium cutting insert and the general purpose insert. So now I'll put up some photos I took with the uh, digital microscope and the Nikon and you can see close up the differences between the two sorts of inserts. Right, the, the first obvious difference is that this has got a much sharper edge on it. This has got your regular rolled edge that you get with inserts. They're pressure formed. They're not machined. They just come out of the, the press and they coat them if they want to and away they go. So these have got like what, what you call a rolled, a rolled cutting edge and it Carbide inserts generally cut like peeling an orange with your thumb. You know, you, you, you have to go in deep under that skin to, to get it to come off. Whereas a high-speed steel cutter cuts differently. It cuts like a, a blade on a shaver, you know, on a, on a razor uh, or a wood chisel. It, it, it's very sharp and it goes in and it can do much finer cuts. You can't do fine cuts with carbide, not regular carbide like this. They're just not designed for it. They're designed to do a specific uh, depth of cut. This is where this is different and what they've done is they've basically formed the insert in the same fashion. The profile is different, it's got much greater top relief, you can see that's much more concave there than this is. And to get that sharp edge all the way around, which basically is very very similar to a high speed steel cutting edge, they grind the sides of the insert to get rid of that rolled edge effect. And I'll show that in another photo. The tip profiles, the cutting profiles, are pretty similar radius. You want them fairly broad for finishing work or for fine work. If you make them too pointy, they will uh, they'll put marks in your job. You won't get as nice a finish. So, yep that's a, a good thing. All right, we'll have a look at it, a side view. Here you can see the difference and clearly they've ground this. You can see the grinding, fine grinding marks in it. They're both uh, positive inserts, so that's what you want for small lathes. 
you can see there's much more uh, top relief, much more angle on the top relief. I mean, they concave them in as, as well, but you can see it's, it's coming down on a different angle. So yeah, that one's coated, that one's not coated. Here's another look. I, I took this uh, shot with the digital microscope and clearly you can see this is finished ground. This is not. This is straight out of the mould. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting to see how this goes. I, in the past, I've, I normally would use high-speed steel for aluminium and for brass. That's the way you do it. I have, however, used uh, a ground insert to do aluminium as well. And you can actually get a, a regular GP insert and you can grind it yourself to this sort of um, configuration, something similar, provided you've got a green, green stone on your grinder. Okay, well I suppose the next thing now is to uh, try out these uh, inserts and see if they're any good. Let's do it. Right, to do this I'm going to use some home cast aluminium that I've previously machined with a ground carbide insert. And you can see it's done a nice job. That's come up pretty reasonable. So now we'll try the, the Banggood insert, see if we can get an even better finish or a worse finish. And I'll spin this at about 600, so I'll uh, set up the machine and we'll come in and do a pass on it. I'll do a pass on medium feed and then I'll, I'll do a pass on fine feed and I'll lubricate it with some Kero oil mix because I expect that that probably would go otherwise. That's the normal situation you get with, uh, with non-coated carbide and in fact high speed still too it'll it'll go with aluminium uh, so you really do need lube okay moving on Nice job. Once again, it's the same that I got from my hand ground insert. Really can't see much difference. All right, I'll come in with this profile. I'll do it dry, see what happens. dry, that was with lube. Mmm, better with lube, slightly. Again, does a similar performance, similar job to uh, what I've used. Now we'll do the same pass again on fine feet. And we'll put some lube on it too. And it should be just a little bit better.
straight away you can see that that's better on fine feed it's a bit shinier and uh, I mean, all the finishes are pretty good once again this is home cast aluminium it's not going to be as good as the machine grade I think I've got some machine grade I'll, I'll dig it out and we'll try on some machine grade You can see straight away it's it's better quality aluminium for sure. Once again, beautiful finish. So yeah, you can see the difference in the home cast aluminium to the bought stuff. There's definitely uh, a difference. So you can see it's uh, not as shiny, not as good a finish. That's the TCPIP. And it's a re regular GP insert. So yeah, definitely the aluminium ones do a nice job. So this is the result we got. That was the board aluminium, nice shiny finish. This is the home cast. You don't get as good a finish, but it's still quite acceptable. And you can see it's, it's done a good job right through on various speeds. And I've changed the profiles around and it hasn't made a huge difference. You can see where I've used just a standard GP insert here on the end of this. When you compare it to that finish. It's certainly not as good, so there's definitely an advantage with the aluminium insert. So yeah, I think they're good. I think they do a, a nice job. There's only one thing I could find with this that was a negative, and that is that they chip extremely e easily. I accidentally bumped one of the cutting tips into the live centre when I was winding the carriage into position. The lathe wasn't even running. And that was enough to chip the tip off that point there off of the insert with a, with a regular general purpose insert that's unlikely to happen but uh, these are obviously very fragile or much more fragile i should say so that's something you have to be to be aware of now on aluminium brass it won't matter but when i say in the instruction not suitable for steel I think you'd better believe it because I don't think the tip would last more than about a second with that sort of use and it also puts a question over interrupted cuts how it would handle interrupted cuts it might be okay in brass and, and uh, aluminium I can't say but certainly that is something to be aware of apart from that it went great and um, look after them, they'll be okay. Alright, just one last thing, we'll try it on some brass, see what happens. Mmm, the finish is pretty mediocre, that's about what I expected. The problem with this insert is there's too much top relief. If you're machining brass, you should have very little, if any, uh, top relief. That way you'll get a nice 
polished finish. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't uh, recommend it for, for this sort of work. Stick the aluminium, it'll be good. Well, that's about it. Time to wrap up. Uh, the link to the product is in the video description. You can go there and have a look and see what it's going to cost in your neck of the woods. And overall, yeah, they're a handy little insert to have. If you're working on aluminium, yep. And I didn't see any sign of galling wet or dry, which was pretty, pretty good. So I don't know whether they're coated with anything special or what, but there was no sign of galling it whatsoever in the time I used them. Okay, that's it from me. Hope you found it interesting. I'll see you next time. Cheers.